The fourth method of approximate estimation is the story enclosure method. The story enclosure method is a method that is a bit more advanced. We started with the functional units method, we came to the floor area method, we came to the cubic method, now we are on the story enclosure method. This is a method which considers uh, the difference in height of the buildings, it considers the height of the basements which are in the building and also the walls. Actually, this method considers separately the floors, the walls and the roofs. So it's a bit more accurate than all the other methods of approximate estimation. Right, so uh, the story enclosure method, something to note about this method is that the floors are measured internally. Whenever we are measuring the floors in buildings, when using this method, we measure the floors internally. The walls are measured externally and the roofs is measured externally. Uh, mostly, we use it on the flat rows of high story buildings. So, for the roofs, we shall take even uh, that extension for the eave that we add after the walls. We shall consider that one. We measure the roof externally from above. Alright? Okay. So, something to note also about the story enclosure method is that we use weighting. Weighting is where we apply a factor. Aha, uh -huh. so we shall find the floor areas multiplied by a factor. We go to the roof, we find the area multiplied by a factor that is called weighting. Then we go to uh, the walls, we find the perimeter of the walls. Uh, then if we, okay, or when we find the area of the walls, we shall multiply by a factor. So we shall do an example. This is a very examinable method. It shall come to, uh, in a neck exam and it's usually 10 marks. So begin as we go through this method, we shall do actually about three examples so that you can be able to practice enough and prepare for your exams. Remember in this channel, it is where we help you prepare for your exams. You have to get that uh, best, the best grade that you would ever want. And also, even after that, you can be able to use this method when you're in an industry to approximate approximately okay remember to subscribe for those who haven't subscribed to our channel kindly right now hit the subscribe button whenever you subscribe to our channel that's the support that you need from you so that you can be able to continue making content for you so if you want us to continue making videos for you even as you prepare for exams you know this content takes a lot of time to prepare kindly subscribe and let's get started all right so, uh, the rules of waiting, before we do an example, we have several rules that we use in waiting. For example, in floors, we shall take the area of the ground floor, we shall multiply by a factor of 2. We shall go to the other floors, we shall find the area of each floor, we multiply by 2, then an additional 15%. So, for the first floor, we shall add an additional 15% after multiplying with a factor of 2. Second floor, we shall multiply by a factor of 2 and add an additional 15% from the first floor, so it shall be 130%. Third floor, we multiply by 2 plus 145%. Fourth floor, multiply by a factor of 2 plus 160%. Good, I hope you have understood. Alright, then we go to the basement floors. The basement floors, we shall take the area, then we shall multiply by a factor of 3. First basement. Second basement, actually we shall just calculate and count the number of basements, then we multiply by 3. Right, so we shall go now to the roofs. After taking the area, then multiplying by a factor, we shall go to the roofs. The roofs, we shall take the areas, then we shall multiply by a factor of 1. Right, for the walls, we shall take the area measured externally, then we shall multiply by the overall height, so that we can to get the total area of the walls, then we shall multiply for the superstructure walls by a factor of 1. For the substructure walls, a factor of 2. Alright, so this is the example now. Alright, so... We shall start by understanding this plan that you are given and the section. Okay, the plan we are given that the wall, the, the thickness of the wall is 200, the length of the wall is 26,000, and the dimensions for the wall is 200. Uh, for the wing, the, the dimensions for the, the thickness of the wall is 200, internal dimensions 
it's 12,000 and the thickness of the wall 200. For the section, the section shows us the story heights. The story heights we are given, and this one we, it was labeled 600. Uh, from the ground floor, ground level here, we have first ground floor, first floor, second floor, third floor. These ones, the heights are three meters each, but the basement floors they are 3.6 meters each. For the roof, uh, it's a flat roof, and it is it extends an eave of 600 each side. Right, so now we are told using the story and closure method, find the cost of this building. Uh, when we are finding the cost of the building using the story and closure method, we shall always start with the doing calculating for the floors, the areas of the floors. So we shall start with the superstructure walls. Uh, for the superstructure floors, mm -hmm, the ground floor, superstructure, remember it's above the ground. The ground floor, uh, we had been given. Uh, the dimensions on the plan. Remember the floors we measure internally. So we shall not consider the wind, the walls. So we shall take 26 meters by 12 meters. We are measuring them internally. So we shall take 26 by 12. For the ground floor, we say that you must play by a factor of 2. That's why we are multiplying by 2. Then we get 624. First floor, we shall take the area internally, multiply by 2. Then we add a uh, multiply by 2, which is the factor. Then we multiply by 115%. Second floor, 26 by 12, to get the internal floor area. We multiply by a factor of 2. Then we multiply by 130%. For each floor, we go adding 15% more. 15% more. Third floor, we shall take 26 by 12, multiply by a factor of 2. Then we multiply by 145%. We get 904 0.8. So all these areas, you, sh you can add them and get a total, a total here. Then we go to basement floors. Basement floors, we shall take, it's the floor area. Floors, we measure them internally. So it is 26 by 12. Then we shall multiply by three basements. The basements are, uh, we shall multiply by a factor of three. Remember basement floors, we multiply by a factor of three. We multiply by three, then we multiply by two two number basements. We have this basement and this one. So we go to a uh, roof after getting the answer. The roof we shall take, we shall measure it externally. Remember on this uh, plan we were given the floor uh -huh, was six twenty six thousand internally. You add the walls. 200 plus 200, 400. So 26,000 plus 400 is 26,400. Okay, it's here, 26,400. Then you add um, the eaves that are here, the extensions that are added for the roof, 600 plus 600. Because we are measuring the roof externally. So it shall be 1,200. So after this, we shall get 6, 7, 3, 26, 100 plus 200, 200, 400 plus 1200. We shall get 37.6. Okay. We shall get 27. Here it's 27. 27.6. Okay. This one is 27.6. Then for the wind, we have 12,000 plus 200, 200. It's 12,200. Then we shall add 1200. So 12,400 plus 1,200, we shall get 13,600, so 13.6. Then we shall multiply the roof, we only should multiply by a factor of 1, so we shall get 375.36. Now we shall go to the walls. The walls, we shall take the external dimensions of the wall. The external dimensions is 26,000 plus 400, we get 26.4. The wind is 12,000 plus 400. We shall get 12.4. Then we shall multiply by 2 because we want the external perimeter. The external perimeter is 77.60. Uh, that one is the perimeter of the walls. Now to get the area, mm -hmm, the area of the walls we shall take the superstructure, the perimeter of the walls is 77.6. How many floors do we have? 1, 2, 
three, four. Four floors we multiply by four. Then we should multiply. Mm -hmm. We should multiply by the height of each floor. The height of each floor on the superstructure is three. So we shall take the perimeter of each floor. Mm -hmm. We multiply by the height of each floor. Then we multiply by four floors. We get. Now that 1.2, we shall multiply by a factor of 1, so it doesn't change. Then, subtract your walls, we shall take the external perimeter, 77.60. We multiply by the floor height, 3.60. We multiply by two basements, then we multiply by a factor of 2, just like we had said here. So, we shall get 558.72. So, after adding all these areas, we are supposed to get the total, the sum of total area. After getting the sum of the total area, we shall multiply by the story enclosure rate of a, a building, similar building that we have. We, we should have the rate from a similar building. Then we multiply by the sum of the total area to get the cost of a building. We shall do two more examples for the story enclosure method, two next examples, uh, so that we can be able to know exact to practice how we should be able to calculate the cost of a building using the story enclosure method so check out for our next videos